Hello all attendees and welcome to another glorious day of learning by Edureka. It is so good to see that so many of you are keeping up with the trends of technology today. My name is Siddhant. I thought it'd be only fair to talk about the devices that enable the Internet of Things to sense and respond using the powers of computing to autonomously come up with the best solutions for any industry today. So let us dig deeper into these devices that mark the beginning of every IoT ecosystem and look at the best ones in use today in different domains. But before we start though, let me quickly run you along the outlines of today's session so that you have a clear idea on the topic that I'd be covering. So first I'll be telling you how you can identify any object to be an IoT device. Then I'll tell you what they can do for you and cite some of the major use cases in it. And then I'll tell you how IoT devices are shaping the entire world and quote some leading examples. And then I'll tell you how secure is a device in IoT. And finally, I'll be telling you all the important things that you need to know to build an IoT device. So without putting it off any further, let us begin our session today. Now these devices that play the role of things in IoT are what make the smartest systems possible today. Be it just a smart appliance or an entire smart city. It could be complete computing devices designed keeping their portability in mind or tiny electronic components operating on minimal device software for data transfer and connectivity without any computing abilities at all. And there are also objects that are not made up of any electronic hardware at all and can still become the things in IoT by having these smart things attached to them in some or the other way. So what I'm basically saying is that even we humans can become a thing in the Internet of Things. But again, that is a contextual term and you'll understand why as we move on with the session today. So for now, we can just say that any device, however puny or powerless, with the ability to receive or send data, allowing it to communicate over networks can be called a thing or an IoT device. Also, it should be serving a purpose, like either collecting some information or delivering some outcome. Now that is the least any IoT enabled device or thing in IoT will require today. Even though the bigger devices have diverse features and can be more powerful, it is the miniaturizing of computer hardware that has truly given the Internet of Things its edge in the market today. It has made it possible for these IoT devices to even function at microscopic levels in the remotest corners of our world and has also brought in focus on more target-oriented features specific to their goals. Plus, with devices running on incredibly low power levels and operating with such minimal resources, the things in IoT come with the promise of implementing solutions in the most cost-effective way possible without compromising on the system's accuracy. This is because at their smallest levels, these things are embedded with just enough technology for them to communicate over the internet and other networks to get the data analyzed, stored, and processed over that network or over the cloud, rather than physically housing all those technologies on themselves. Also, such low power levels are perfect for the little chips, sensors, and other low energy components that these devices use for their operation. But like I said, they're substantially equipped to connect wirelessly for exchanging data and performing actions based on them. Also, such low energy modes of connectivity make it easy for these things to operate just about anywhere while letting us control and monitor them remotely for almost any part of the world. So it is as if the British technology pioneer Kevin Ashton, who coined the phrase Internet of Things back in the 1999, somehow knew of these potentials that IoT brings out in devices today. So let us see what things can do for you. So one of the most popular implementation of these things and their applications have been in the sector of home automation today. The use of Internet of Things in this industry has got the world closer to achieving a dream home powered by the smartest systems using these IoT devices. And these systems have been built such that all its devices can intercommunicate to allow owners a customized access to all aspects of your home like your lights, your locks, or the inside environment, or security cameras, or even your total energy consumption. With the brand specific IoT platforms and clouds behind them, these IoT devices are now capable of exhibiting ambient intelligence and also stay connected to the internet for driving real time operations. So, let us get into some examples of IoT devices used in most smart homes today. And we must begin with the tunable smart lighting systems like Philips Hue smart home lighting or the TP Link multicolor smart Wi Fi that can be easily controlled using your smartphones with the option of creating custom lighting automations from anywhere in the world by just being connected to the internet. With smart lights like these, you could turn them on or off anytime and tune the color and the brightness of lights in your homes remotely no matter wherever you are. Moving on, did you know that locks and keys are getting old fashioned nowadays? No, it's not a joke. Smart locks are a part of almost every smart home today. And the August smart lock third generation is one of the newest and the hottest ones on the market today. What makes it stand out among its peers is that it comes with Bluetooth support so that you won't need to worry even if your internet is down somehow. With a device like this that attaches to your existing deadbolts, you'll always know if your door is completely closed and locked. With its door sense technology, it'll even remind you to lock your doors when you're leaving 
or tell you if they were properly closed or not based on the location of your phone. You can even create secure virtual or temporary keys for your neighbors and guests just in case. Now the next IoT device is the Nest Learning Thermostat. It is one of the best examples of an IoT device today. As a part of your home automation system, this intelligent device learns your schedules and preferences over the first couple of weeks to smarten the cooling and heating systems in your home and then regulate your home temperature automatically to save your electricity by 20% among a ton of other features. So to reduce your energy bills, it uses sensors and your phone's location to realize the weather, the time or the environment inside and when nobody is home, it will shift into energy saving mode. Apart from the thermostat, Nest also provides smart cameras with smoke and carbon monoxide alarms to better manage your home's atmosphere and its security. Plus, it lets you manage and monitor each of them through its dedicated app or even build your own revenue channels upon them. There is also one more device that I think is worth a mention in the home automation systems of today. It's mostly just a doorbell for your front doors, only a lot smarter. The video doorbells by Ring is a modest name for all the things that it can do. It's like you're always home, as it lets you answer your door from just about anywhere. It will in fact even alert you of motion within 30 feet of your door and stream its live footage onto your phone. And if somebody rings a bell, you can let them know that you're not home and even have a word with them. With its night vision, the wide angle high definition recordings get simultaneously saved to a cloud for your use anytime. Now, before I tell you what else IoT devices can do for you, virtual or home assistants like the Amazon Alexa, the Google Assistant, Siri, and Jibo are also a trending application of the Internet of Things and have made it big in the home automation systems of today. Now, other than making your home smart, IoT devices are also capable of intelligently tracking your health and fitness. And as far as fitness goes, the Fitbit tracker or the Apple Watch and other such smartwatches have been a revolutionary success. And along with your fitness aspects, they also solve your day-to-day -day healthcare needs like checking your heart rate and perspiration levels and tracking your body temperature to predict a cold or a flu on the way. And you'll be amazed to know how the other IoT devices are saving more lives and making healthcare better, like the Philip Healthcare's medication dispensing service, or the Hero Smart Pills dispenser are the most successful use cases today and exemplify the potential of IoT in the healthcare sector. It is the perfect reminder for your medications and is a convenient measure for the elderly and the sick alike. With the option to remotely manage it with your smartphone, you could also monitor the medication of your near and dear ones and be notified upon running low on any medication at all. Plus, you could also get info on the right medication for common health hazards. And now, with how integral smartphones and internet have become in our lives, health and fitness solutions using IoT will only get more and more prominent in the recent years to come. So apart from the personal benefits that you can get as a consumer or a user, IoT also aims to impact the greater good. The talk of smart cities is prevalent these days where the waste management system is more efficient, pollution in the environment is checked, and even the outdoor lighting and traffic signals are equipped with motion sensors to ensure energy conservation by turning on only upon detecting traffic updates in its route or upon sensing pedestrians and vehicles nearby. Now let us look at some of the other sectors of service and civic amenities that these IoT devices are powering to up the efficiencies of our world today. One of the most visible smart systems in place is in the domain of transport and automotive today. And along with more and more connected car platforms today, there has also been a lot of hype around smart and self-driving vehicles hitting the lines of transport very soon. Plus, with the maps providing real-time intel and the modern vehicles housing numerous sensors in them, you could always tell which way to go or what parts need to be looked at. Like say tracking the fuel consumption, altitude and maintenance issues of flights in real time without waiting for it to land every time can help in anticipating problems to schedule maintenance prior to its arrival so that delays and mishaps are minimized in the aviation industry. Another major area of application for IoT devices is in the field of agriculture. A sector that is often neglected despite its utmost importance can now be brought up to speed with IoT. With several cheap and minimal sensors that monitor the best climate and soil quality for the right kind of crops or other smart devices that ensure the efficiency of automated irrigation systems, even the gardens in your home or the trees in smart cities or even the plant life and vegetation in agroforestry or wildlife habitats could be kept in check. The most innovative IoT devices today include the smart watering system Blossom which can create optimal watering schedules for all the plants in your home based on real-time weather data and forecasts and will regulate all your sprinkles accordingly and allows you complete control over them through Bluetooth or the internet. And also the Clean Grows Carbon Nanotube Probe is one of the best IoT devices for farmers and gardeners all around the world today. 
with sensors to monitor the intake of nutrients in the crops to better manage farming resources and improve the quality of their fields farmers can now alter the maturity rate and the color of crops for better yields and faster rates of production now it might be a little ironical of me to talk about one of the very first industries to be made smart on such a late note in today's session but i really just wanted to save the best for last and believe me the sector of retail and logistics is where the internet of things promises the most astounding results with iot devices already being extensively used in shopping restaurants hospitality industries and many other businesses to control the supply chain effectively and obtain valuable insights based on them and manage their logical or merchandising expenses in the best possible ways now the q hop is one of the leading examples of internet of things being used in the retail today typically designed to bring in seamless autonomous checkout technologies to all retail verticals by digitizing the checkouts through rfid tags that only unlock after its payment is processed the sole purpose behind it was to allow users to self checkout in stores although it is mainly used for security reasons today to inhibit petty thefts in stores but guess what that was before the inception of amazon go earlier this year now the technology inside this convenience store will really seem like it was pulled out from the future somewhere although it is so new that there are only three locations with these futuristic stores so far so operated and managed by the online retailer amazon these stores can give you a shopping experience unlike any you've ever had before with the idea essentially being grab and go these stores will just need your amazon go apps for you to enter and then employs computer vision machine learning and sensor fusion to automatically add items that you pick instantly onto your virtual cart and will also remove them off just as promptly if you keep them back now once you've grabbed all the things on your shopping list and are ready to exit all you need to do is just walk right out of the store yes no more lining up in busy queues of the usually limited checkout counters to wait your turn for the purchase you can exit the store without even having to pull out any cash or a card and you will find the amount for all the things that you walk out with debited simultaneously from the balance in your amazon account such a smart system could also check the inventory regularly to notify retailers on the need for restocking and even helps to manage the supply chain in a better way now there are also other promising areas in logistics that iot devices have started to impact like in the case of shipping cargo or fleet management smart bluetooth low energy tags are attached to the items being moved for remotely tracking their exact locations speed of transport and storage conditions for instance the things.io is a simple iot platform that provides a dedicated cloud based dashboard for better logistics by enabling access to real time and reliable inputs from its connected smart sensors and paired location trackers irrespective of wherever they might be so all the use cases and the respective iot devices or things we just went over are only a select few out of the countless applications of the internet of things that can drive almost any sector today and these iot devices could be things themselves or even attached to someone or something to make it a thing in iot like even a person with a heart rate monitor could be a thing in iot as it collects and provides information that can act as inputs to other smart systems to operate on so the baseline for anything to become an iot device could be laid out as any object with a unique ip address for communication over networks and the ability to gather and transmit data or receive data and perform tasks based on it and the embedded technology in these devices are what interact with either the internal states or the external environment to capture all data and drive decisions made upon them now with the internet of things being such a large community of different devices the challenges of iot devices mainly start with communication as the protocols and languages used by each of them vary hugely due to the lack of common standards for all of them yet and this lack of a uniform and secure standard across all iot devices poses great security risks making them highly unreliable for most important operations and interoperations today also without customers being assured of the privacy and security of their data there is just no reason for them to risk using or adopting such insecure solutions but do you really understand what the role of security in iot devices is today Well let me tell you about a major cyber attack that happened back in October of 2016. A large distributed denial of service attack dubbed Mirai affected DNS servers on the east coast of the United States which disrupted services all across the world. Upon further investigations this issue was tracked back to the hackers that infiltrated smart networks through the IoT devices being used in them like the routers or the camera. So that brings about the situation wherein our devices and data are all remotely connected and stored upon these networks. and its security gets compromised we might even not know it over the first few days or weeks and it might be just too late by the time we do realize 
Now the way in for these hackers were undoubtedly a result of poor practice at some end, like say the use of default passwords rather than changing them. Hence the adoption of better practices and the reinforcement of proper authentication, network segmentations, encryption and cryptography can still make the things and its systems quite secure. Given that we start making sure of building them up securely from our end as well. Plus the issue of overall connectivity is also a feat that our world is still striving to achieve but hasn't been able to accomplish. That brings us to the last topic for today. So let me tell you the important things that you should know to build an IoT device. So building an IoT product or device or solution must be done thinking about the relevant purposes that it can serve and the ways in which they can be prepared to work for at least the next couple of decades along with the option and space for quick improvisations and upgrades. And just like we saw in all our examples today, you must have understood the two important categories that IoT devices are mainly made up of. The first is the hardware aspect and the underlying rule is to aggregate the hardware in the most minimal way you can without compromising on the primary features that you want your device to use. Now these features are mostly due to Bluetooth low energy sensors or beacons connected to the internet or a customized product with probably a combination of these on a circuit board made up of a semiconductor like silicon and may also house other components like transistors, resistors, receivers, transmitters, actuators, an integrated circuit or a microchip. So most devices like a smartphone are a result of such combinations on a little more complex level with proper casing and with the second most important aspect of these devices. So the second important category in IoT devices is the software aspect. On the device level, the size of your software would depend on how minimal or bulky your device is and what are the components that you're housing on it. On the most basic note, the device software only needs to be enough for handling the operation of your device, driving components to collect data and converting them into transmissible form, connecting to networks, driving the transmitter to send data and the receiver to receive data to and from the network and converting it to the machine understandable form for driving components to perform some task or display some outcomes based on the received instructions. Now all this will require very minimal software unlike the software on your phones that come with entire mobile operating systems. All the other important software for intelligence and smartness in these devices will be provided by the underlying cloud infrastructure and even by the mobile apps or web dashboards. The software aspect of IoT devices is in fact what controls the hardware aspects to sense some information or perform any instruction. While both aspects are the most integral parts of an IoT device, you might also need to overcome a few more hurdles before your IoT device is truly ready to implement smart solutions and power smart systems of our world today. These hurdles could be connectivity issues or compatibility problems or security and privacy concerns. But don't let the obstacles dishearten you. Instead, just consult people with knowledge on the same. So that'll be all for today. I hope to see you all again. Until then, happy learning and cheers.